Guys, we did it. We're back. We're back. We've done it. We've joined a lobby. We had a few problems with flyby connecting to the lobby first, and then a few issues with the lobby not loading Ten properly or remaining. propagating. Whatever was happening, it just wasn't happening. So it took us a little Ten while, but remaining. after that break, hopefully you found yourself some snacks, a drink, and you got yourself all nice and comfortable for game number two here of this best of three. IGV, they currently lead one game to nothing up against eHome in this ESL one Hamburg qualifier from the Chinese region. Single elimination, best of threes, all the way through until you reach the best of five grand final. So, Ehome technically here one game away from dropping out of the running, whereas IGV one game away on the flip side from uh, moving towards the semi-finals. And we could just do a quick breakdown of what's been happening. LGD defeated Vici Gaming early today, and LFY beat VGJ Thunder. So, the LGD teams beating the Vici Gaming teams pretty simply, but then they face against each other in the semi-finals, so you've got LGD LFY tomorrow, as well as Invictus Gaming getting knocked out by Keen, so Keen have moved on to the semis, and of course we'll be facing the winner of this series here. As we get ourselves into the draft, it looks incredibly similar, actually. Incredibly similar. This looks, this looks almost identical. How oh, absolutely bizarre. So the starting picks and bans last time. Well, the picks were Earthshaker Oracle for IGV. Uh, mm. Earthshaker AA for IGV. And Earth Spirit Oracle for E-Home. They followed through with a Pux Ven Queen of Pain from IGV. The Void is banned out right now from E-Home, which I think was the same from last game. Whereas E-Home, what did they do? They went Clock Monkey Death Prophet. But it's the same bans. AA Huskar removed. IGVs Void plus Nature's Prophet. I can't pick. remember if the Nature's Prophet was banned in the second phase last time, but honestly, it doesn't really matter too much. It's what they pick now that we really care about. As we get ourselves into the second pick phase, do you go for the Queen of Pain, the Sven? Do you, uh, what was, what was there as a hero again? I, I just said it and I've forgotten. It was, uh, Puck, wasn't it? You went for Puck in your third pick. Five Could still go for that remain. quite easily here. Game number one went really nicely for you, so why not try and repeat the same draft again? If you can win with it once, you can win with it twice, right? Surely. That's how this works. Dire team picked. Sven stands ready. Well, there's the Sven. They don't go for the puck third. They pick the Sven before Ehom can maybe steal it away from them. Turn to pick. But this time Ehome go for the Magnus. Oh. What does what does this mean? Magnus offlane potentially. I'm I'm not sure if Magnus is a CTY hero. Um, you know, we we can see CTY switch to the mid lane. We have seen Ehome do some funky things where they've moved Faith Bian around in the lanes, but mm. five seconds remaining. We'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes. With Sven and Earthshaker, of course, you do see that kind of dogpile effect where Sven or Earthshaker blink initiate with an Echo or a Stormhammer. Then you have that follow through from, you know, AA, the Puck, the whoever's behind them to actually come in and do some extra damage. Magnus, very good against these kind of strats where you're all, you're all collapsing in onto one hero, of course, with a big RP. You do need something to go alongside it, though, one of these big melee heroes that's able to dish out some beefy damage. With the Empower, something like a Troll Warlord perhaps would be nice here from E-Home. Good against the Sven. Pretty tanky, build into BKB. Which is nice against the stuns here from IGV. You can survive through it. Very good with Oracle as well, because you buy into the Mask of Manus, the Lifesteal. Which does pump you back full of HP with the False Promise. Uh, even though there's an Ice Blast there, you're still probably able to do that regardless. Let's have a look. Where's my hero list? What are we looking at? So, against Magnus, Dying you'd like some Blink Cancellers, you know, Venomancer's banned out. The Doom with Scorched Earth is pretty nice, but also being able to Doom the Oracle and make sure that that one roll hero, such as the Troll, isn't kept alive for too long up against the Sven, AA, and Earthshaker, because they like to burst people down quickly. And Doom stops the saving potential from Ten the False Promise. Remaining. With that lovely ultimate, so aptly named. Five seconds remaining. So right now, IGVs usually... Turn to oh, it's Phantom the PA. Assassin. Interesting. Phantom Assassin against the Sven. You've got good evasion. 
Still going to suffer a little bit here up against the magic nuke damage coming in. Oh, good in power target, though. Very, very good in power target. Also very good with the Oracle. Same story as the trolls. Ten Buy a lifesteal and remaining. you hit people a bunch. You get some crits and all of a sudden, you're full HP. Five seconds remaining. Very good at jumping on targets such as the AA as well. You know, incredibly squishy. Incredibly squishy. So usually in a draft, you pick, you know, your kind of four, five, and your three in the first couple of picks. And then you leave your one and two until the last two just to try and keep them as hidden as you possibly can so they don't get too counted out by your opponents. Ten so I'd kind of risk it here to say the Magnus is going to play offlane. He does have an escape remain. mechanism to get away from the Cold Feet plus Storm Hammer from AA Sven in the safe lane, so that Skewer will be able to kind of give him a little bit of safety. It's a relatively long cooldown though, but it should be fine for him just to head up there for Faith Beyond. Then you'll have this Old Chicken PA, maybe, maybe. It uh, also could be the CTI, uh, CTY mid-PA special if they want to go down that direction. Definitely a possibility. But we're going to be looking now at the ban from E-Home against IGV as the mid-hero is the last remaining one. And Sakata taking up the mid-roll. And Queen of Pain banned. What other options do they have? Oh yeah, the puck was banned in the, in the first phase. That's I do apologize. Lack of sleep is starting to... Uh, Starting to melt my brain. Sakata Heroes. Oh, where's the Viper? Is Viper still out there? <laughs> Show me the Viper. Death Prophet's still available. If they want to go that route as well. I would like something potentially with a bit more nuke damage, a bit more a bit more oomph from the mid lane. I'm just wondering what their hero is. Storm Spirit's banned. Lack of single target disabled there from your home. Very apparent. RP and well, the Earth Spirit combo is really all they have to deal with anyone like that. Maybe a Hurricane Pike purchaser here. As well as that nuke damage they're looking for. Potential heroes, Shadow Fiend. I'm not sure about a TA, but that could be a possibility. Ember Spirit is actually pretty good here for IGB, right? With the Vengeful Spirit as the fifth pick now from E-Home. Looks like he will be the mid PA. Safe lane Venge and off lane Magnus. They could mix things up. I'm never sure with these E-Home players exactly what they're going to do. But uh, yeah, IGV. Ember Spirit works nicely. Again, lack of, uh, like a lack of single target disable, lack of ways to lock the Ember Five down. They do have Fortune's End to kind of purge off the Flame Guard, which is really, really annoying. But Ember Spirit's still going to have a, a, a great time with heroes like AA. But it's going to be the Lena. That's the nuke damage they go for. And potentially a Force Staff Carrier as well, with Hurricane Pike being a popular item on that Lena. Great with the AA. Very, very good disables as well, but it's just going to be the nuke damage into the PA, into the Ventral Spirit. Two agi carry heroes who are very squishy. They've got decent strength gain, but pre-BKB, they will drop quickly to the Fiery Witch. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, has. What are you doing, dude? Uh, that's, that's a good point, yeah. Fortune's End purges Warcry. I was talking about... Uh, I was talking about Fortune's End purging Flame Guard just then, wasn't I? Yeah. I, was, I, I, don't, I don't think I mentioned the Warcry as well, but you, you're absolutely right. If PA goes for the Deso Vlad's build, then into BKB, or ra rather Vlad's Deso, then into BKB, and it is going to be the CTY PA, Fortune's End against the Warcry. Very, very sick. Es especially... Right, ima imagine this scenario. IGV, they're looking to fight. They start running forwards, they war cry, and they sprint towards you. We'll wait for the music to stop. Just a second. As we go to our in-game thing. So yeah, IGV, they war cry, they run towards you, you've seen them, you land, you know, like a three-man RP. Let's, let's just say it's a three-man RP. Fortune's End comes out, and that's three heroes now that are going to get purged of war cry, right? Prepare then the PA back. comes along with Empower, and cleaves them. Cleaves off the target. Easy peasy. You do have to land your RPs, of course. Not as easy. Hopefully. Let's check. Is it Faith Beyond? Yeah. Faith Beyond on the Magnus. This should be good. 
They should be good. E home up against IGV. One game ahead in this best of three, of course, as you can see. And Innocence spotted there by the Doom, faking out where he's placed his Observer Ward. Maybe trying to make the Doom think he's placed it there, or he's trying to... Yeah, there's the pings. Trying to make him think he's placed it up here as well. Doom actually being told by the AA there's the potential for the Observer Ward to be up there. Unfortunately, no sentries around. I don't think they're going to go and deward it anyway. And what are these lanes going to be? Earth Spirit is going to look for the Courier Snipe mid. HYM takes up that role once again. AA Sven safe lane, pretty classic against the Magnus. Likely takes the skewer first just to be able to dodge out from the Cold Feet stun combination between those two. And then you have the PA mid, CTY, Quelling Blade Stout. Doesn't go for the PMS straight the away, begins. even against the Lena. Wants to be able to try and last hit under her <laughs> nose. <laughs> and not worry easier. too much about the harassment coming in, because you'll be able to bring out salves and stuff to yourself. PMS will come shortly as well. Not going to be a massive deal, but it's the first few CS that really are a big problem for the PA because of Dragon Slave, because of the ranged attack harassment coming in from the Lena. But this Observer Ward here, already about a quarter of its way through the duration, placed very early on. But it's going to give vision behind the tower, going to give vision of the courier. But look, we saw this many, many times. Earthshaker comes in. He knows the freaking Earth Spirit's going to be there with the attempted courier snipe. So they'll move the courier back into the trees and it'll be perfectly fine. And the battle continues. Dogfights in H uh, HYM. Just going at it. Going at it. So Sven on the bottom lane actually getting denied out here by Faith Beyond. There's a PMS, and Sven actually has zero last hits. Okay, I must have missed something here. What did I what did I miss on this bottom lane? I've been watching mid. What did I miss, guys? What did I miss on bottom lane? Where Faith Bian has two and zero and the Sven was zero two. Just empower? Is that all it is? He's going to power level one, playing very ballsy on this lane with the PMS. There's the chilling touch with the stun. And he skewers away because he's level two already. Very bizarre laning here from, <laughs> from IGV. I'm, I'm going to have to watch this replay back. Faith Bian must have done just some six CSing. He gets himself level two quickly, so now he has empower and skewer. Not just the defensive tool, but also one that will get him some CS in lane. One place we haven't really looked at, though, top. Fortune's End in onto Doom. They've got the stun from Old Chicken as well. But they force out the Scorched Earth. Relatively long cooldown. It's pretty much another ultimate, honestly. Over a minute long on that cooldown. As that Spirit rolls on to the two-minute bounty rune. Will snipe it away. Equally, though. Oh, actually, no, not equally, though. Innocence gets it under the nose of the Doombringer. Finds the bounty rune somehow. CTY blocked off by the Fisher. Will have to retreat back up through the north. Still a bounty rune standing, and I think Earthshaker might just make the long wander up there to steal it. Yeah, dogfights. He gets up there. He'll be just fine. So Magnus, yeah, slowing down a bit now. They've reset the status quo of this lane as the chilling touch. With the stun from Sven just harassing back the Magnus, forcing the skewer. Not quite as long as the defensive mechanism of the Doom, the cooldown there. 20-something seconds compared to over a minute of the Scorched Earth. Flyby still holds the mango, so he's got that burst of mana regen to come through if they do want to try another kill. Level 2 on the AA is here, so they have the cold feet. Yeah, here we go. The PMS Quilling Blade kicking in. 20 and 0. No denies on the PA, which doesn't look very good, but it's perfectly fine. You're barely behind the Lena, and you won't be behind the Lena at all, really, with this full creep wave coming in. Should get some juicy experience there. With the Quelling Blade, a lot of damage goes into the range creep, so it's just two hits from the tower, and then you can take it down if you get the lucky rolls. Dogfights is kind of struggling to find his place. He's managed to stop the Earth Spirit being too annoying in these lanes, though. You can see here now, HYM just makes the rotation top, potentially looking for this Doombringer. Still a difficult kill to find, even if you're able to change your stuns with Scorched Earth. He regens up and runs like an absolute madman. That's really obnoxious. 
Cancelling clarities like that. So the Dragon Slayer from Sakata burns through a raindrop charge as Retribution. Faith Beyond taking out a mini stack here. Should be pretty simple for him, but Super not only gets a bounty rune, but also finds a double damage. Not sure quite just yet what Super is going to try and do with this, though. Faith Beyond playing very timidly, just falls back towards his jungle camps. Won't collect his bounty rune. Mm. Yeah, he just farms, he probably farms medium and then stacks large, right? Then returns back to lane for this wave when it inevitably comes in. Unless, of course, Super manages to get this nice little pull across, which should be simple enough for him. Magnus for now will just stick in the jungle for a little bit, at least. Mid lane, the PA continues the domination of the CS, 37 and 1. Farming away like an absolute mad woman here on the PA. There's your first blood. SRF. Scorched Earth was on cooldown. That's how they kill him. I really am. Quite interested to see what's going on in this mid lane as soon as PA decides to jump in because level 6 has arrived with Brown Boots and Ring of Aquila coming through on the Courier. The PA could start to look for targets to blow up. Lots of squishies here on the Radiant team. Earthshaker, AA, Lena. None of them really have great <laughs> maneuverability or ways to escape engagements either. Yeah, Lena losing CS to a PA. I mean, PA is a melee hero of the Quelling Blade, so you're going to get CS. You have daggers to get more CS. You can basically add like a, you know, 30% to your CS value just through that. Got strength from Sven, interestingly timed. I don't know if he's looking for maybe a go here onto the Magnus, because we have a rotation coming on in. Oracle TPs, gets the fortunes end, the roll, where's the kick? HYM, lines it up, throws it out. There we go. Skewer back though into the Vengeful Spirit means that Sven is caught, but the three-man Fisher means Flyby turns back to fight with Pian gets. The damage in and Y will secure it with the purifying flames. Great little rotation there from the Vengeful Spirit, level five, and already making that movement down to bottom, and they get a four-man shrine off as well. It's gorgeous. But yeah, it, it, it it's, it's a PA, so you're gonna get CS. But it's also the fact that, like people are saying in chat now, it's CTY. His old nickname, his old nickname was uh, the Six Minute God because he would win laning stage every single game. People were literally afraid to play up against him because he was so good in laning stage. Just Earthshaker, dogfights. Oh, where do you Fisher? Where do you Fisher? Up to the north. Yep, there. Catch the two of them. Now the LSA into Dragon Slave. Clear up old chicken. A couple more punches will do the job. And why he has to go back through the tier one middle lane, and it looks like he'll be okay to do so. There's no one really there to catch him. Gets back to the safety of the Phantom Assassin. Yeah, who's actually going to go for treads this game? Quite often we see the phase boots and you know, potentially the Vanguard before the Deso. But this way you tank up through your little items rather than buying a full Vanguard or a full Vlad or you know your S and Y or something along those lines. You can just go treads into Deso if you really want to. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And I, I genuinely do apologize if I missed some kills. We're now into, um, yeah, we're now into hour 13. Yeah, hour 13 of casting. So, a little bit frazzled. We'll do the best we can. But I, I do just want to apologize to you guys watching if I, if I screw up. It is my fault. I do not have anyone to blame but myself. <laughs> As 50% of the kills in this game have already, <laughs> have already been missed by the camera. It's fine. It's fine, I'm sure. Top lane, they're looking for a bit of a go here. Vengeful Spirit still pretty squishy. A couple of items in and she gets tanky, but with the face boots build, not the treads. And the Fisher missing. Fate Edict comes out to the Venge, and they look to turn this one around. The blink falls from the PA. There's the root as well. Earthshaker's caught. Roll it from the Earth Spirit. Hold a smash only onto the Earthshaker, but the Purifying Flames will finish that one off. Good enchant totem dog fights. Trying to slow things down, but it's inevitable that he will lose his life. Deceased on the top lane. Nothing doing here from IGV as they are starting to lose a grasp on this game. But we've seen this before. E-Home are very good at the rotations early on, very good at their laning stage. But once things get to a certain point, 15, 20 minutes in, they do start to lose a little bit of a grasp on what they need to be doing moving forward. But 
I feel like in the previous game that was much more draft related than you know decision making. They didn't really have the tools at disposal to go and make action happen around towers. This time around, Venge can push a tower, move into tier ones and tier twos. Magnus with a blink dagger can then you know sit behind her, wait for the initiation to come into the Venge, or wait for the aggressive swap from the Venge. Then you've got PA who has this blink ability to jump onto targets. So you have displacement tools galore. You've got Earth Spirit Kick, Magnus Skewer, Venge Swap. You've got Disables, a bunch of them as well, but you also have the damage to follow up, which is really, really important here for E-Home. Last time, they really struggled to you know, pick a target, focus the target, kill the target. This time, there should really be no problem. Plenty of skills to go around. Three men in the mid lane here from the Radiant, though. Ancient Apparition does need a bit of time on lane to reach that level six. But right now, they're going to be focusing on getting flybys from farm. Tiny little ancient stack there, cleared up by the Sven. I'm going to sit up in my chair. Let's get perked up, because here comes E-Home, running down this middle lane, looking for the swap, potentially on the AA, but Super a little bit too speedy for them. The roll lands, Super's caught with the bot smash, they'll find the kill. Looking for a secondary one, wait a second, Super's still alive. There we go, finally dies, the Purifying Flames animation lands eventually. I get the killing blow, and Lena looked like potentially she was going to turn around and find the turnaround onto Earth Spirit, but a few stick charges flow in for HYM, and he is perfectly fine. Two to five. Any home do have to worry a little bit about the Sven, though. Remember, against the PA, the Sven, sure enough, struggles with the evasion, but here comes the Doombringer. Swap back onto the PA, still gonna die, no deny. SRF chases it into Innocent. The Oracle being burnt down by the Scorched Earth, and one more swipe should do the deal. Nah, not gonna hit him, not gonna punch him, gonna blast him. I'll be an assassin. I'm going to bloody well use the skills he gives me. And that's a three-man sweep through the mid lane. Sven was still farming away. Bottom lane, he shifted towards the mid, looking to fight. But in fact, just goes and kills some neutrals because the fight was already won, to be perfectly honest. And now you've hit six on AA. Now we start looking at the net worth as well, can't we? Two Radiant Heroes up at the top. Magnus, where is your blink? It is ready. Level four in power as well. Ancient Apparition being scouted by a Vengeful Spirit. And you're dead. So this isn't actually going to be the Deso Vlad's PA. This is the Mom Diffusal PA. Diffusal, again. We uh, saw Nahas talking about the Fortune's End dispelling Warcry, which is you know, a sick idea. So not only do they have that, but they'll have the Diffusal Blade if PA finds a solo target to get rid of the Warcry on them and just burst them down individually. Now we start looking for this Blink RP. Plan A is going to be the Vengeful Spirit comes to this tower with a creep wave. The creep wave goes here. Venge goes here. You hit the tower. If someone comes near you, you swap them. If someone jumps on you, you swap one of your allies. And you take them into battle. But most importantly, the Magnus will be nearby to get maybe a Blink RP and a Skewer play. There's Ice Blast landing top lane. A bit of a deterrent there. They do retreat back into the jungle, keeping this Empower up on the Phantom Assassin. Important as they farm the Ancients, but scouted out by this Radiant Observer Ward. Top lane. They continue their push, actually. Radiant just very happy to sit back and farm. Bot lane, Lena takes down the Glyph. Wait, no, that's the Radiant Glyph, never mind. But they should be looking to take down this Tier 1. There's Radiant, yeah, they, they, they Glyph top. Dyer's bottom tower is under a little bit paranoid about what's waiting behind here. And that's due to CTY and Faith Bian both being off the map for a significant amount of time after the little top lane push. So they expect maybe a play on the bottom attack. lane, but they're waiting to see who Radiant's shows on top. top. There goes the Radiant's tier one. 
Was that really? Did Doom? Doom tried to deny the tower with a skeleton. I mean, that's that's a 10 out of 10 for effort. That is a sick attempt, honestly. <laughs> Good try. SRF, I like you. I like you so far. Good puck play last game. And now you're trying to deny towers with skeletons. Yeah, let's go, dude. In on the PA. Here we go. Up, and full spent. Nice blast. And the Fisher. PA gets a little bit further back. Spen dragged a little bit closer to tier two. But the Magnetize only catches on to Flyby. Throwing down another couple of stones to stun the Fortune's End. But Flyby's still alive. Surely he's going to die here. The dagger finally kills him off. As CTY comes back for the shrine. Still up and kicking. Look for another ancient stack, and that ballsy play nearly paid off for IGV. But unfortunately, they feed away the highest net worth, well, second highest net worth hero now on their team, and they give close to 300 gold to the Phantom Assassin, who's closing in quickly on that defusal blade. I mean, Mask Man's PA isn't that crazy against the Lena, honestly. I mean, what, it reduces her armor? Silences her? So freaking what? If you daggered and you blinked, you pop your mom, you've got no spells to cast, and losing armor is like no big deal here. How much armor is it? You lose six armor, so you still have, uh, yeah, eight armor. You're still perfectly fine, I think. And against the Lena, it's no problem. You've also got an Oracle behind you. I, I think Mask Manus is honestly an amazing item on heroes like Troll and Phantom Assassin. Radiant are scanning. Oh, that was middle lane. Scan comes up onto the shrine as well. CTY pops it to get some mana back. In comes the Doombringer. Pops the ulti and the Sven. No mana to stun. He's uh, still a little bit away from it. 20 mana, in fact. Where's my arcane boots? Where's my arcane boots? Give me some mana, team. There's no one to give him any. And now Flyby's gone on by HYM. They're going to try and initiate on this. There's a Blink RP ready. It's beyond, but Flyby's just going to be given up here. Diffuser Blade arrives. They use the first purge over onto the Sven, and CTY gets yet another kill. Opening up Roshan here with Sven dead for 40. This could be an attempt in the pit, and CTY walks himself straight in there. E home. They are looking pretty damn good this game. Chicken denies bottom. And with this ice blast coming through and Sven alive in nine, maybe Roshan isn't going to die here. CTY still appears that he wants to go in. They have the Magnus Blink RP, of course. Not yet being used to massive effect, apart from that no solo RP on the Sven at bottom lane. Was, it was nifty, but it wasn't huge. Fate Edict stops Roshan doing damage. Make sure he's not going to be punching people. But in come the Radiant team. Vengeful Magic Missile onto Doom. There is no ulti from him, but there's the Blink RP catching two. Skewer back. Where's the damage? But there's the Echo. God boys turns it around. The Lakuna Blade in. Pop out. Look at the PA's dead. And ticket in trouble as well. A double kill for Sakata. Why? Running, sprinting. Get me away from here. The Oracle nearly pops to death, but the Roshan goes to the Radiant IGV. Slow me home. Attempted Roshan. Get out of my game. Fly by Sakata. They do not want me home to be taking a single game off them. Bloodstone up to 16 charges now for Sakata as well. Loot to travel coming. Straight after that should be the Silver Edge right against the Phantom Assassin. And he's a pretty good item on the Lena regardless. That is so unfortunate. E home. I guess they, they were they were coming back, right? This this is where things turned. They were they're kind of plateauing. They, they, they were coming back. They were making things happen, looking for team fights, and then one bad thing happens. Well, a bad thing just happened to the Lena. No one's coming to save her, so this is gonna have to be a suicide. Oh, straight away. Straight away. Is Lena losing the Aegis? 
and buys a shadow blade immediately. <laughs> Baits out or waits for the boots to travel at least a little bit longer. It was a decent enough RP from Faith Beyond. They just couldn't stick the damage in. Also, the fact that this this little bad boy had gone unnoticed. <laughs> I don't know if you guys in chat, maybe you guys saw it picked up in the uh, in the old sidebar on the right, but I I didn't. I had no idea. He just came out of nowhere. It's like, oh god, the RP. Oh god, they're gonna die. And then Dogfight is just like, nah, -uh, I got Blink Echo. I'm here to save the day. And save the day. He did. Home. Still have a bit of farming to do. BKB being built by the PA now. Needs to clear through these jungle camps and ancient stacks as quickly as possible. Oh, did he skewer the Earthshaker in? Ah. That's what happened. That's what happened. So it wasn't his blink. My bad. My bad. I'm just watching it back now on the uh, on the old little stream. Nine to eight. Twenty minutes in. E home. Getting shoved back a little bit here. IGV. They're definitely feeling the rhythm of the game now. They've got flyby into a uh, halberd, or at least close to it, with just Radiant that talisman of evasion step. coming. And of Midas on the vengeful spirit. The one roll venge really suffering in farm. Sub 7k. Everyone else in the uh, the farming rolls way above her. Well, Faith Beyond's having a pretty similar time as well. Gone to the soul ring and the arcanes after the blink just to try and keep his mana up. He's trying to spam as many spells as he possibly can. Without a hand of Midas or something on him, he is Lion's going to have to try and just attack. shove waves or clear jungle camps. So hard Radiant though when you have a PA on your team taking attack. every ounce of farm off the map. This is this is the struggle, right? This isn't Venge, you know, farming badly or, or messing up. This is the fact that PA needs a lot of gold to function. And PA is soaking up all of the jungle farm, all of the lane farm, and Venge just doesn't have anywhere to go. Like here. Venge has to use Midas on a creep and then PA kills everything Radiant's else. Middle tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Oh, good job, Dyer. Killing a tier one all on your own. Radiant's Radiant all grouped up down, but attack. the mirror effect is real as up top. They look for the trades. Tier two for tier two is what they're angling for here. Oh, there's Ice Blast expended. Super just wants to clear the creep wave and TP out, it looks like. Away he goes, tier 2 on this top lane, still pretty healthy as Dogfight waits around for someone to show themselves bottom. Dyer, can you go back and farm their jungle now for now? Dyer are scanning. Blink Echo, trigger finger ready for dogfights, but now you have a BKB on CTY, and we've seen the um, we've seen the amazing things he can do with these items. Manta dodged uh, a Fisher earlier today as uh, oh god I can't remember what hero was it yesterday? It was Monkey King? It was, mo it, was, it was Monkey King. He was Monkey with a Manta yesterday, and he Manta dodged a Fisher. With BKBs, he's been dodging instant spells as well somehow. So fast on the fingers knowing exactly what's going to happen. They're looking for a hero down towards this mid-tier one, and the AA, unfortunately for himself, has shown, but he'll tank the gank. That's perfectly fine. Ancient Apparition for a smoke. They're not going to lose any other heroes here, as they have their TP scrolls on hand and at the ready, while bottom lane, Dogfight, just shoves in on this, on this bottom lane, 9-9. Nine nine. I know a lot of you in the chat, you're talking about heart attacks, but 
Well, we're one kill away from your bets being Giant's good or bad. Under one kill away from that F10K. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has been. Perhaps you put to travel and heading into the Shivers Guard there to try and deal with some of this physical damage from the Dyer team. The Lena will tank up after that and maybe buy a BKB or something along those lines. Radiance top tower is under attack. Blink from Earth Spirit could change things up a little bit here. Now they have the double blink. Magnus and Earth Spirit to land their combos. Super's just obliterated. Doom is also stuck. He blinked into the trees and he's gonna die as well. Two for nothing here for E home. Potentially the BKB from CTY's pop just to make damn sure they're not jumped on <laughs> by an Earthshaker blink echo, but Lena was nowhere to be found. Very, very far away. Find clear jungle camps that don't exist, unfortunately. This one does. So E home. Radiant structure. 911. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Hopefully everyone bet on E home to get first 10 kills. And I'm sorry if you bet on Vitality. But enough of that. Sakata here, Shadow Blade about to wear off. Clears the creep wave and not going to get jumped here by anyone from E home as they make the full retreat back towards these lanes. CTY potentially looking for someone that's lurking around, but gets scattered out by the Radiant Ward regardless and has to make the walk back to the lane a little bit longer. Only one bit of vision here from the Radiant, it looks like, around this northeastern part of the map. Two Observer Wards, but they cover relatively similar places around this bounty ruin, around the Ancients. A bit closer to the mid lane there. This is mainly a smoke ward. Can be used as a tier 2 takedown ward. Just looking for who's behind. Oracle, Earth Spirit, Magnus, anyone lurking in the shadows. And they've already taken the tier two with this ward as well, so it served its purpose pretty much. Now it's all about watching the shrine for anyone who TPs in here. Is it going to work out this time? Last rush and attempt was pretty disastrous for E-Home, but this time they are doing it incredibly speedily. Feet Edict onto the Roche. Stops him from attacking in. They have the evasion of the PA as well, and this Ice Blast comes in too little too late. Aegis and Cheese now for E-Home. CTY picks up the Aegis, and the Cheese goes into the backpack of the Vengeful Spirit. This is all in on CTY. Venjora, Magnus and Power, False Promise, and a BKB. Even a kick from an Earth Spirit can help out. But the Phantom Assassin has to be the one that kills people and does all the damage. Because no one else really can. Everyone else is a supporting cast to this Phantom Assassin as she comes in for the tier two mid. With the damage output she's got, close to 300. The tower does fall relatively quickly. Bot lane tier 3 being pressured here by Sakata though. Getting that chip damage in with a long range attack. Very nicely done. So they trade a tier 2 for some damage onto tier 3. There's a swap into stun. Eventual Spirit has gone in on the Lina. They miss the LSA, but the Blink Echo is there with the Laguna Blade as well. That's a two for nothing. Now they TP in aggressively, looking for a play here on the top lane. Doom. RP, a solo RP. Oh god, that means there's no RP for bottom lane. They're gonna go kill tier three. Do you buy back here? You have to buy back Earth Spirit at the very least, right? They're gonna take tier three and maybe Rax. Glyph has already been forced. Are they gonna back up? Oracle's TPing in. They're scared of the buybacks. They kill the tier three though. For a Doom? I'll take that any day of the week. Oh dear, oh dear. Ice Fate Edict blocks the Ice Blast. 
Nuke damage doesn't stop the trail, though, so that will still keep ticking over after the Fate Edict does expire. That's exact. Now being healed up a nice little bit there by CT, uh, onto CTY. 17,000 that was on his PA, but losing your tier 3 there and Aegis lasting for another 2 minutes 40 seconds. You need to make something happen within those 2 minutes 40 seconds. It's pretty much just going to be two minutes flat by the time they take tier one and tier two. Radiance bottom because the Radiant, they won't defend this. They won't defend tier one. They, they might think about defending tier two, but it's, uh, I don't think it's a likely, a likely outcome for them to actually Radiance go for that play. Look, look at this. He's going for a refresher straight away. Blink. Went for the full stamp after the Sol Ring Arcanes, but refresher for the double RP feels like a necessity. Yes. I, again, I'm just going to repeat that this is the PA show. Everything here on this E-Home team is to keep the PA alive, allow the PA to do damage, and to stop the enemies from running from the PA, basically. Basically, that's what's happening. And here go the four heroes. Phantom Assassin pushing in on this bottom lane. MKB freshly purchased arrives now. The TP scroll, it's ready, but are you going to tell you, oh, you're going to TP to tier 2 here. They've got no glyph, so the tier 2, if it falls too fast, here comes the stun, the magnetizer itself. PA arriving in. RP into the back end somewhere. No, I'm not sure. Flyby's caught, but he's still perfectly fine. They kill off the Aegis already. The Echo Slam is a disaster as I'm lagging or something because I'm not seeing spells. Now the Earth Spirit gets the ball to smash across too. Can they run themselves away? There's another blink in, but there's no skewer. Uh, there's no RP. There is a skewer though. They do find a bit of collateral there as the Earth Shaker <laughs> dies. I'm not entirely sure what the sequence of events was there. I heard the RP. I saw the Sven a little bit later on, but it was the fight at the front that was really wonky. PATP's in, gets LSA hit, and CTY felt that he had enough time and space to just be able to TP in aggressively forward in that position, rather than going for a little fog play there. But that might just be because HYM made the call, and he had the magnetize, and he had a nice stun lineup. That didn't work out in the end. Dyer's Team fight is not under too attack. good for E-Home. Do lose the Aegis of the Immortal as well, which was really meant to secure them a big team fight win or a high ground push here for the Phantom Assassin. Dyer's bottom shrine has fallen. Waiting for an ice blast, or what's happening here? Because your shadow blade is about to wear off. Silver edge recipe, about 500 gold away. That will be a good little tool to deal with a phantom assassin. As the PA after MKB, honestly, quite a difficult item decision. Like, what what do you go for here? Do you tank up with a Scardi? Do you? Like, heart seems not good. I, I guess you could disassemble the mom and go for a satanic, right? And just hope that uh, by the time Ice Blast wears off, you're, you're not dead yet. With an Oracle, that's definitely a possibility. So we'll see exactly what the PA does if you disassemble mom, make satanic, and then, like, you're not going to go butterfly on the PA, are you? I I've seen it before. I've seen it. Stacking evasion is uh, its a bit cheeky, to be honest, but not the most efficient thing to do. But we'll find out what CTI thinks. He is the mastermind on the hero. Still saving up his money, but there's the Silver Edge from Volina. Still shifting around towards the middle lane, Innocent. Oh, Invis, gonna wear off very shortly. Hides in the trees, spotted by the Doom there. Oh, no. No? Did they really not spot the Doom? Earth Spirit rolls forward, there's the blink back, Doom. TP's away. Everything misses. They nearly found the Sven even hiding the trees down to the south, and they ping it now, realizing Oh, very unfortunate. How oh, very, very unfortunate. Radiant are scanning. It appears it's going to be a Lincoln Sphere here. Very interesting. Oh dear lord. Well, Faith Beyond 
ceases to exist near his shrine. Deleted from the game. Now the Zoom moving on forward to the PA. Link is pop, but obliterated. But the buyback from the Magnus, it comes out, but there's no buyback on the PA. They're chasing to more. That's a double kill for Sakata. This looks like it might just be it. A blink away from the Earth Spirit will buy him a little bit of time, but his, his TP is on, it doesn't even have one, actually. It would be on cooldown because he tried to use it, but now he just doesn't have one. Goes around with his gem. Didn't want to lose that. Has a couple of sentry wards as well, but he'll go on a bounty rune excursion through the jungles. The trouble is, space and time as he knows it might just end before he gets back to his own base. There is no god strength to remember though, so it's not going to be an easy kill of these barracks. And there is still that fear, the threat of the buyback from the PA. But CTY being CTY, fully bought the Lincoln Sphere and doesn't have buyback in this game. So it will be a glyph being held. Lane of Rax is falling. They will not pop the glyph to defend this. They'll try and hold for another lane when they have the PA alive and they have this Blink RP ready to roll. In moves IGV, wanting another lane of Rax here, trying to apply the pressure and trying to force E home into a situation where they have to make a play, make a move now. Where's the swap? They start with a stun. Old Chicken fish it up there. I do have a Blink Echo and a nice little Ice Blast here, but with one lane of Rax gone and the tier three in disrepair at middle lane, they will revert to the shrine and take that down instead. Dyer's top shrine has fallen. I mean, old Chicken just doesn't have anything. It's, it's 35 minutes in, and your carry Venge is behind the Doombringer. It's half the net worth, right? Your, your carry Venge is half the net worth of the PA of the Lena. The Sven is a little under farm this game, it feels like, but Flyby has tanked a fair number of ganks as this rotation comes in, but it's going to get spotted by the Radiant Creep Wave. And Doom TPs away, and everyone's fine on the Radiant team. Double damage rune for a PA. Where are you, CTY? Take the double damage rune. They want to take Roshan instead, but this is incredibly risky. This is incredibly risky. Observer wards being removed. Sentry on the floor. In goes Doom. Roshan's still alive. They throw it out, but the Lincoln Sphere is there. He's wasted his ultimate and he's blasted into oblivion. Old Chicken. He gets the false promise onto him. In comes Fly by looking for a kill. Nice pass on the land and SRF does buy back to try and return to the spike. But in comes the break. The Silver Edge. It hits off the PA, but the stuns, they're locking down the Lena. Oh, Sven. Lincoln's pops the stun. CTY might be able to blink across the HYM. Good silence there from the Earth Spirit as this fight is disjointed as all hell. Vengeful Spirit can a hurricane bike up into the high ground as well. Into the spent. Looking for the AA. Ice Blast. Not going to be ready for another 10 seconds. RP somewhere in the back. They found the uh, Earth Shaker and nothing more. CTY does find a kill on Sven though on the front lines. They blink forward. The Doom looking for more. There's an LSA perfectly placed as the Lena. Swings this team fight back the way of the Radiant IGV. Forced the buyback of the Vengeful Spirit as well, and with Roshan dying, she's an Aegis, goes the way of Sakata. Stun, oh, it's there. It's there from HYM. He has to roll away, but the LSA, the damage from the Doom, they clear him up, and now Venge PA. The gem is dropped. Sakata right clicks over the Fisher. The damage is insane. SRF wants to get in with an Eternal Blade. There we go. Oh, Vengeful Spirit ceases to exist. Good Fisher chainsaws here from IGV as well. CTY tries to life jump through it all, but he's dead. The PA is gone. 82 seconds, destroy the barracks, then get back. IGV storming to victory in its best of three. It looks like they're going to win this two to nothing. E home still. A little bit of a chance here to take this one back. The buyback from the PA could be the difference maker as long as Innocence doesn't die. Forced to pop the false promise onto himself. Yes. As the Doom and the Lena will fall back just a touch. Ice Blast will be ready in about five seconds when the AA respawns, but the buyback from the PA will be enough to sate the hunger here of the Radiant team. P8 
APA is now moving into that Abyssal Blade. I might even just drop the phase boots for it to get the Abyssal or the Basher. Malirax is regenning up that nice little 5 HP per second. Bringing it back up to a nice little uh, nice little total there. Might might even return to full. Did the Prowler kill someone in that fight? I can't see Dyer's it in the log anymore. Oh, they rooted someone. <laughs> the freaking Prowlers are so annoying. Scanning. This is a risky high ground push though. IGV obviously know the one way for E-Home to get back into this game is a great RP. Shadow Blade over the refresher. Faith Beyond knows he needs something now. He needs it straight away. One RP. One blink from the PA. Literally all they need to try and swing this game back around. What are we looking at here? Cheese on the Lena. There is no Aegis anymore. Sven nearly has a full Assault Curass, but buyback status, how are we looking? <laughs> never, never mind. No one's, no one's got buyback in this game except the Lena. Lena's just at the top saying, hey, I've got buyback. I'm the cool one. Oh, here we go. Ice Blast for the Fisher. And the Echo Slam, just to secure this one. Old Chicken turns with the stun there. He's looking at the blade though. Damage out. Old Chicken for the Blink RP. Here's the PA. Where's the damage? Cleaving, putting through. They're actually doing it. They're killing off two. Uh, Sick of Doom, both brought down by the PA. Oh, they forced the false promise. Flyby still standing, still alive. This Halberd, he's evading every attack. Somehow he's still alive. Now, finally, they take down the Sven. The Sven? No. The freaking AA and a Rampage. There's the Sven. PA does get the team fight win. My brain lagged a second there. I just see this PA slamming people. I'm like, what the hell is happening? That's the fight they've been looking for. That's what E Home have been wanting. But the trouble is, it happened on their doorstep, so they can't really move outside of their base. Who ball back for that? Lena did. Ten times godlike streak ended by the PA. And PA is going for Butterfly. I said that it was unlikely. Um, it was an option, but looks like that's what CTY is heading in for, not the Abyssal Blade. Which is maybe a little more expected. Oh, and Sven dead. No one with buyback. Lit literally no one in this game. Not a single one has buyback. Earth, Earth Spirit will. Good boy. Earth Spirit has buyback, yes. Let's sort that, let's, we can't sort this by yes or no. No. We can't. Oh well. oh well. Swift movement into the raiding jungle though from E Home as they gather up and look for any solitary pick off they can find, but there is no one waiting around. Okay. They're going to try and attempt a high ground push here. All ultis available. Every single player in the game has their ultimate up. Roshan, well, fastest respawn will be 2 minutes and 10 seconds for now. Hey, that's not a butterfly. That's a divine rapier. Is this how the game ends? Hide the rapier. Come on. Drops the Mask of Manus and keeps the phase boots. I think they know. <laughs> they, they, I th yeah, the, the ping comes out. Like, hang on a second. That crit was that crit was big. That that crit was very big. 
Well aware of the rapier here. The Radiant are not going to push out with their base too soon. Tier 4s are getting touched in bad places by the creeps from the bottom lane. mid rack still stand though. Fourteen thousand net worth lead. It was about twenty-one, twenty-two thousand there, so that's a big, big swing back towards E-home, but Invisibility. not uh, not too dangerous. Jesus Christ! At three thousand three hundred thirty-two. Shadow Blade away. Lena's going to go for an MKB of her own as well, just to try and deal as much damage to the PA as possible, because, yeah. Persona non grata. This Phantom Assassin is someone who needs to, deserves to die from the eyes of IGV. From the eyes of E-Home, CTY on this PA is the, the saving grace. This is their messiah. Whether you follow the flip-flop or the gourd, the sandal is king. She will lead you to victory or down a hole. See how scared Radiant are. They want to farm their buybacks. They probably, they probably even want to wait for Lena buyback. Honestly, that, that's the safest thing to do here. Is literally wait for three minutes twenty-two seconds for Lena buyback to come up. Just so you can be damn sure that you're not gonna screw up. With cheese in hand, they do move into fight. There's the silence coming up, and he can even fly by chasing in a two-man stun. It catches onto them. The cleave, the cleave. LSA lands on the freaking ventral spirit they can't see old chicken four snap up but not far not far enough they don't get the latch on though old chicken still survives somehow IGB retreats scared of the RP they didn't want to collapse in too hard <laughs> with the buyback from who was it HYM you can definitely feel the tension rising around this Roshan pit both teams vying for control they both want Roshan they both want Aegis but the Radiant, they want it to stop the PA from having it. And the Dyer, they want it so the PA can have it. Keep this rapier in the hands of the Dyer and the Phantom Assassin as they're losing shrines. They're actually losing melee racks here to the double catapult wave that's coming through the bot lane. Someone has to come back and save this and it will be the Phantom Assassin. Double dagger. Double freaking dagger. If CTY does it, everyone should do it. Especially if you have a, if you have a rapier. What did you just drop, my dude? Phase boots for travels. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Genuinely, this game should have ended 15, 20 minutes ago. IGB. <laughs> like, look, look at it. They're just like. Winning, 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 it plateaus a bit, and then they get that huge swing up to 20k. But one good fight is all they need. BKB from the Sven comes in and clears HYM. That's a dieback from him. Echo Slam not going to do too much. No, we're going to play. Ventral Spirit down there. Small promise onto Faith Beyond. They need, they, they need something. They need an RP. The PA kills Alina. Fair enough. You won that in the two man. There's the RP. They've got the boat. Fisher needs to be landed, but they can't get it. The old kill out from the PA means E home with the team fight. They've got a dagger. Earthshaker. Oh, he's purged. He's defused. He's going to get critted. Come on, CTY. A rampage again. E Home are doing it! E Home are winning team fights! And E Home might just have this game! 48 minutes in, it's 28 to 26, but ITV can't catch a break! They can't do it against the Rapier of CTY! The RPs of Faith Bian! Oh baby! What is happening? The comeback is real! Solos down Roshan, takes the Aegis, finds the cheese.
What an insane turn of events! <laughs> oh. They can't push high ground just yet though, with everyone respawning from the Radiant. They'll give my voice a break for a couple of seconds. Okay, right, I'm going to take a sip of water. Nothing's going to happen for a, for a while, so... Just, just relax. <sighs> well, <clears throat> Eham decided to go down the lane, but they don't have barracks in. Keep this one pushed out, so someone like Nalina can't just keep shoving it in and forcing them to return to base to deal with the tier fours and the barracks that were getting pummeled. Radiant are scared. Scared. Is this how you want to start the fight? Is this really how you want to start the fight around your tier two? It's unexpected, sure, but are they <laughs> really Ehome, they're all ready. Ehome are all ready. Tier two. Gonna get shoved here just by the creeps as the PA boots the travels in onto the creep wave from very nearby. Here we go. Close to three minutes left on the Aegis of the Immortal. Double damage, Phantom Assassin. Jump forward, swap is there. I don't know what's happening. The PA is BKB'd, but no one has been gone on. Sven, now jump to bot. There's the bash coming on through. Flyby's about to die. He's going to get himself further back. The Doom onto the PA finally arrived. Lincoln's field on cooldown. There's the skewer from the RP into the PA. Can they cleave and crit? Can they do the damage? No, they can't. The Ice Blast lands. The cheese is there for the leader. And now the PA struggling. The fourth one is now thrown onto the CTY. Lincoln's popped again, but this is a lot of damage coming in. He should be able to heal herself up. Low on the HP. The Aegis. Oh, he's still holding onto it with the Rapier as well. They have to get the lines of play. Get close. Top fight. Perfect play. In with the Echo. PR still has RP, remember. He's going to go with himself. But where's the PA? The PA's dead. Eho dreams are dead. Rapier on the floor. IGB, they win a fight at their base. The comeback has been halted. Ehome, buy back the Phantom Assassin. CTY couldn't be kept alive long enough. RP came a fraction of a second too late, and now they've got to buy back as many as they can. Magnus dead for about a minute. Earth Spirit, he'll be alive now. Buyback status, what are we seeing? Radiant have them all, but the AA, Dire have none. Not one single buyback available for the Dire team. IGV, this is still a little bit risky. You don't have your ultimates up, they're going forward. There's the Stun Ice Blast in. Catches a couple, the encounter is perfect again. Dogfight carrying them through this difficult part of the game as they take down two. CTY, it's all on you. Abyssal Blade at the ready with the BKB as well. You need the Empower though, you need this cleave, the extra damage from the Magnus, but 20 seconds without Faith Beyond is a massive struggle to get through before you lose your entire base. Blink forward, Innocent. Cool, absolutely sliced in twain. Now it really is CTY and Dyer's Faith Beyond. Daggers being thrown. And Chan Totem with a Fisher as well. They're looking for the Cold Feet play. CTY backs up. Doesn't want to pop the BKB just yet. Here's the Empower. RP in 24 seconds. They move on forward. BKB there. CTY getting hit by this big old Sven. Oh, he's dead. Ice Blast comes through. But the Enchant Totem will seal the deal. GG is cool. E home tap out because IGV finally win the game. 38 to 26. Dear Lord. And that's me done for the day. That's me absolutely fully done for the day. 
IGV, they progress through to the semi-finals. They will face Keen Gaming tomorrow. LGD will face LFY tomorrow. And then the victors of those two semis will, of course, meet in the grand final best of five to qualify for ESL1 Hamburg. I have been Gareth. I have now cast for about 14 hours for this Chinese qualifier. And that was one fucking spectacular game to end on, I'm not going to lie. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out and chat as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I am out of here.